everybody welcome back to rich back creations today i'm gonna do a project that i've been dreading for forever but at the same time i do look forward to finally trying my hands on it and that is the candles from lupin's classroom that he and harry potter practices expecto patronum against the dementors in so without any more talking let's get started Starting off the project, I measured out the mold that I was going to use to cast the candle in and that was about 26 centimeters tall so I decided that my candle could be maximum of 23 centimeters or 9 inches so that I knew I had some silicone go on top of the mold as well and I measured with the lid making sure that it wasn't too wide or too big in places so that it would still fit in the cylinder so that was what I was doing here and then planning all the different sections of the spine upwards and once I got that plan I was ready to go. For the clay I'm using a type of plastiline or oil based clay which means that I can heat it up so I had a water bath on the side to heat up the clay so it was easier to get the basic shape of the candle without straining my fingers for too long. Once I got the right S shape, I was ready to do the different sections and I decided, I think it ended up being 13 or 14 different spine sections. So just making them a little bit smaller as you go all the way to the top. Once I got the different sections out, I began to remove the mid part of every section and then start to blend that in towards the edges so it was curving inwards. And then there's, I just continued doing that all the way to the top and just blending the edges, folding them from each other. It's a little bit hard to explain, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And I just continued doing that again and again and again until I was happy with the basic shape of the spine. Once I was happy with the sections, I began to sculpt the point where the different parts meet and just folding the edges nicely and making it a smooth curve so it looks more anatomically correct. This candle is not anatomically correct, but yeah. Then I continued on with the spines on the back and these looks like little shark fins. These were way too long so I did cut them down quite a bit off camera but this is pretty much the shape that they had. They were just way too long. So I'm attaching those on the back first because I thought it was easier to use that as a reference when adding the spines on the sides. The ones on the side is a little bit more rounded off in the edges but they're pretty much the same size and shape as the ones on the back. And let me tell you, this took forever. It took forever to blend all the edges and attach the pieces. And I was going a bit loopy at this point. So yeah, just prepare that this is a project that takes a lot of time if you want it to be nicely blended maybe you do it faster who knows but yeah it took me forever and i'm just trying to make all the spines be in the right position in terms of the different sections or the what is it vertebrae? don't remember but yeah working and working and working and then when i was finally happy i was going to put it in the mold and i'm just doing finishing touches and that was pretty much it for the sculpting part
yeah, nah, this ain't pretty. I'm sorry, the mold from the beginning of the video, it turns out it's too big for the amount of silicone that I just got in the mail. So I just have to make this Frankenstein monster of a mold and you wouldn't think I actually have an education in mold making when you see this. So prepare yourself better than what I have done. But these are desperate times because Halloween is right around the corner. So now I'm just gonna make the silicone. So the silicone is a one to one ratio. So I'm just gonna weigh it on my scale right here and make sure that the parts are weighing the same amount. And I think I'm gonna do this in two steps so that I make sure I have control because I'm not convinced that my mold is actually completely waterproof or silicone proof. So I wanna make sure that, yeah that I have control, which I don't have, but at least let me pretend for a minute longer. So as you can see, now I'm just mixing the silicone, making sure there are no air bubbles. Trying to get the air bubbles out on the way down. Kind of stretching the mirror bubbles by pouring from real up high and trying not to hit the mold too soon because I wanted to get flooded from the bottom and upwards. So the mold has now set. I've already taken off one of the panels right here. So this is actually the silicone. And now I'm just gonna pry it off the table and start to remove all the plastic pieces. As you can see, it's now out of the plastic and I'm now just gonna cut off the little loose parts that doesn't really have any purpose and then I'm going to start cutting into the mold. So when I'm cutting this now, I want to make the edges uneven so it's going to be like a puzzle when I get them back together. And I know from my sculpt that the rib things are going, like the spines are going this direction. So I'm going to try and cut along those so it will be an easy mold to take on and off. And I managed it really well on one side, but the other one I was a little bit off. And that side was not easy to demold at all. So yeah, really make sure you know where you're cutting and take your time to do it properly. So the mold is finished and hopefully it works. Time will tell shortly. And I've made myself a homemade steel wire needle that I just put the wick through and I punctured a little hole with this in the bottom and I'm just gonna get this one through that hole and hopefully my needle is long enough to just sort of guide it upwards. I push through the needle and since it's quite long, it's now long enough for me to take it through the little puncture hole and get the wick through. I'm just securing the mold with some rubber bands so that it stays nicely in place but I don't want them to be too tight because I'm afraid that it will kind of misshape the mold on the inside so just be careful. Okay so hopefully now the mold has set and there's a candle inside here who knows now I'm just cleaning off the excess that was on the top and now it's ready to open it up. So yeah, this is where everything goes bad. The wax that I was using was a soy wax and it was super soft. So the minute I opened it up, it just turned into moisturizer basically and everything just turned into mash. And I just had to scramble around the house to try looking for white candles that were a bit harder in the wax and I had to go for that. So the final details on this project, like the Roman little numbers and everything, I just skipped that part. 
So if it happens that you do break off a spine or two, don't worry, just take them gently out of the mold and heat the edges and just stick them back onto the candle and it should work just fine. That happened to me, don't worry. So that is the finished project for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I learned a lot through this process of this project. And if you like content like this, make sure to like and click that subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.